Today's video is going to focus solely on creating really beautiful and really unique chapter headers. We're going to go beyond a simple font because we already talked about font in that video about the font, which is linked in the playlist below if you want to watch it after this one. But while a font can be absolutely gorgeous, sometimes you want to do a little bit extra because chapter headers, there are some that are just stunning and they look really gorgeous. And so it can be fun in self-publishing to kind of attempt to do some of these fancier formatting styles when it comes to chapter headers. If you are here with me watching this video, then you and I are feeling a little bit extra. And so maybe you want a huge image that takes up the entire top of the page or even a two page spread, or maybe you just want something dainty and just a cute little extra flair of like a swirl or something on the chapter header page. Whatever the case may be, we're going to go a little above and beyond your simple fonts today. This is where formatting finally gets to pull from all of your creative genes and we get to do something a little more exciting. Obviously, when you're doing something like this, there's going to be less rules and that can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm going to try to give you some fun examples of each of the different types of things you could try. And of course, as always, I'm going to highly recommend that you take a look at the books on your shelf and study your genre and what's most common in your specific genre to maybe give you some ideas as well of how you could be creative in this particular area. Let me pause the video for one second. I should rewind really quick and introduce myself. My name is Bethany Atizada. I am your professor in this free mini masterclass, free for you at least. YouTube is paying me, so thank you in advance for watching the videos all the way through, for liking, subscribing, sharing with your friends. All of these things are like a free tip jar, so it really helps my channel. Thank you so much in advance. And it's looking like it's gonna be a very full class. So let me introduce you to our TA real quick. This is my teaching assistant, Google. She is super helpful. She's available at all hours of the day and night, and she has pretty much endless resources. So I'm gonna be honest with you, even though I am the professor of this course, she knows more than I do. You can definitely ask me questions if you'd like, but I gotta be honest with you, I'm pretty much sharing every single bit of information that I know in this course. So I may often end up referring you to her because she actually knows quite a bit more than I do. There are five quick things you should know before class starts. Number one, I will be reading from my notes here on my computer pretty carefully since this is a very complicated subject and I don't wanna miss anything. So if you see me looking down, that's why. Number two, I am only able to share what I know and what I have chosen to do. So just like everything else in publishing and writing, there's probably a million and one different ways to do formatting. This is just my personal experience experience. So despite this incredibly professional course where you're going to come out with a bachelor's degree in formatting, I actually have no formal training and I'm basing everything off of my own experience formatting over 10 different novels and sometimes learning things through what they call trial by fire. So again, I don't know everything about formatting, but I am gonna share as much as possible in the series. And for everything else, I'm gonna point you to my fabulous TA Google for any support questions you might have. Number three, I use this gorgeous template that has built-in formatting already set up, and I highly, highly recommend it. I'll talk more about this template throughout this series, so make sure you watch all the videos in the series if you wanna know more. Number four, Oh yeah, did I mention that this is a series? I'm going to put all the videos in this formatting series into a playlist on YouTube that I will link below every single video. If you want to go back and watch any videos that you missed, you can find that in the description box below. Last but not least, number five, I am going to timestamp all the videos in the series as much as possible, which means that you can look at the bottom of the video to see what is in each section, and that way you can easily go back and forth and find something again if you need to watch it a second time later Later or a third time but I just want to encourage you not to skip around the first time because you might miss something really important and I don't want you to be confused okay back to the video this video works very very closely with the last video that I just did about how to add images so I am not gonna reteach you how to add images in this video I'm gonna just keep it linked in the playlist below so you can watch it again or after this one if you missed it before I actually show you anything though, I think it's really important to mention that what I'm first gonna show you is specific to physical books and not ebooks. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you what I do for ebooks. That's also a really cool chapter header option, but very separate from physical books. So this is where our paths, if we're doing both of them, are going to split. And you're gonna do one thing for physical books and one thing for ebooks, okay? Just 
throwing that out there and I will show you both I promise I'm talking about my hands a lot in this video I'm getting a little energetic I think the coffee is kicking in Whew. okay so we're gonna start by taking a little trip over to a free website called Canva where we can create all kinds of gorgeous chapter headers and input them as an image into the chapter. This is a free website where you can create all kinds of things. I have an entire video about how I use Canva as an author. I'll add that to this playlist in the links below if you wanna watch it. But today I'm gonna to show you specifically, of course, chapter headers. So you can play around with the different sizes. If you want to avoid more complicated formatting like that bleed feature that I mentioned in the last video, you could do a much smaller image so that it stays within the margins of the book and you don't have to worry about the bleed feature and setting all that up. Or if you wanna do something really snazzy, you could do something that's like a box size that's gonna cover the entire first half of your book's page. Or even like I said, a two page spread. You could even go into, I think there's a Wattpad book one in here. Hold on. Okay, so you can click on templates and you could browse by category. I am pretty sure there is a book template in here. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, there we go. So we've got book cover, but then I could swear to you that there's also a Wattpad book cover in here somewhere, but whatever, let's just go with this. Cause that's like your generic, like it's the right size for a standard-ish page. So if for example, you wanna do a two page spread, this could be the left side that's just artwork. And then on the right side is like a half artwork. And then the other half would be the story beginning, obviously. This size feels almost like the top half of a book page. So let's go for it. So then the next step is to decide if you wanna start with a template that maybe has a font that you like. So you could browse, you could be like, oh, that's totally what I want. And you can delete some things, but keep the font that you like, for example, or you can start with a blank template, which is what we're gonna do. The next step is of course, adding your text, because typically the first thing you're gonna need for a chapter header is the chapter name. And you of course could browse all the options on the left here for stuff that's a little bit more unique, or in this case, again, we're just gonna pop it in with your basic one and go from there. So you could just literally have the number one, or you could write out chapter in the number one, or you could even write out the entire thing, chapter one like that. And then when you wanna change it, you go into all the fonts here and you can play around with all the different styles and you can just explore. So these are gonna give you more styles than you probably have in Word and you don't have to download individual font styles because you're doing an image. If you click at the top, it's gonna give you some options where you can narrow it down. So if you really want specifically a handwriting look, there's corporate, there's some really fancy stuff more header paragraphs, sans serif, so on and so on and so on. Ooh, vintage, that looks fun. If you know that one of these fits with the vibe of your genre, that can also help you kind of narrow down what exactly you want to do. Futuristic would be really great for sci-fi. Let's pretend we're writing a sci-fi book and we're gonna do, some of it's kind of strange. This gives you an idea, that one's really strange. Um, okay, so we're doing our sci-fi book. Let's scroll through. Let's say we do this because I like how the T is bigger. It's one of these little details that makes a book look more professional because it's not over the top, but it's also not something that you're gonna just pop out in word. You know what I mean? It's that perfect balance between too crazy and crazy enough, I guess, I don't know. So your first step, of course, you could resize this just like you do all other images and you can drag it around so that you can place it in the middle. Canva's gonna help you with these little purple lines. So you can see how it's helping me center it perfectly in the middle there. And if you wanted to, you could stop here and you could have this gorgeous thing, just a really big font that's unique and you could download it and put it in the top of your chapter, which again, you can watch that video on how to insert images if you wanna do that step. Or you could take it to the next level. So let's do that. The next level in my mind is adding subtle details. So let's do, for example, in the elements section, if you click on that tab, there are little doodads, that's the professional word for it, like these lines here. There are also a ton of other options. You could go crazy. You could just explore this all day. You might not have all day. So let's think, what's a good sci-fi element? Spaceship, I guess? Oh my gosh. All right, so I have Canva Pro. I recently finally upgraded. Not an advertisement, I just really love Canva. But let's say that you don't wanna pay for it, you just want a free image. You can go ahead and search through, here's a free image right here. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. That's a little bit more almost middle grade feeling to me and also it's in color. So what we might wanna do, I'm gonna delete that. 
And I'm gonna look for one that lets me change the colors. What's this? Nope. Okay, so this one's not nearly as exciting, but in that top corner here, you can see that it's green right now, but it lets you change it to black. Now it's something that can work in a print book, so I could also make it smaller. You can use the little rotate option to do stuff like that. So again, you might be surprised when you first see something and think that's not gonna work, but then when you pop it in, that looks really classy. Does that not look amazing to you? That looks amazing to me. So sometimes the simpler stuff can really, really pop and look amazing. Let's delete that and I'll show you what a pro option is. So this one, I personally think this is adorable. You can overlap things if you want, which is one of the nice things if you were using font in your computer plus an image, like you just had this rocket, you could not easily overlap things, you could, but it'd be difficult. Versus here, you can put it wherever you want. Oh my gosh, how cute would it be if this was the number one? Does it fit there? Oh my gosh. Well, of course we have to remember our 10 basic formatting rules and number 10 was consistency. So this would be very difficult to keep consistent through all the chapters since there's not an O in every <laughs> chapter name. But I just gotta say, that looks adorable. Does that not look really cute? And then of course, since a book does not usually print in color, we just have to do a little bit of fiddling here to turn it into something printable. There you go. Now it's in black and white. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is the cutest. Now I'm gonna show you what I do when I find something I like, but I'm not necessarily done. I'm gonna go ahead and click this little guy at the top. I'm calling it a little guy because I don't know, but it's duplicate. And now I have two options. So let's delete that or actually I take it back. You can always backspace. Maybe I wanna compare having a really big spaceship going, I don't know, sideways. This looks not as good to me, but you know, let's go with it. And I wanna compare these two side by side. So down here at the bottom, you could, first of all, I should point out that you can zoom out. But the second thing you can do is compare them side by side, just like this. Well, I wish I was writing a sci-fi book because I just found my chapter header <laughs> um, and of course this far right button you can even zoom in and take a really close-up look at it say that maybe it's a little grainier than you expected you could pick a different image and then you click escape I'm gonna zoom back in so we can look a little closer one other thing that I played with a lot when I was testing out things for the Stolen Kingdom that I still would like to do someday is an element that covers the top half of the page. I should gesture in Canva. So it covers this part and it's sort of like a, a fading image, but I had trouble finding the right images in Canva. I remember I looked at clouds. Yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> um, actually something like this. I didn't used to have pro, so I didn't want to do something like this, but look how adorable this is. And of course, you can see right now this isn't working, but if I click position, bring that forward, now my chapter one is on top. I personally don't think that's super exciting, but it gives you an example of how you could have your image go out to the edge of the page. Here's another one, let's try this guy. Yeah, I think that looks really strange. Okay, keep in mind a lot of the stuff that I'm picking is pro because it's just prettier but you can definitely play around and use some of the free stuff. So, oh my gosh, that's kind of cool. See, now I don't think these go well together, but it gives you an example of how you could have a really fun image. Actually, hold up. It's still not really the right genres put together, but it's kind of a nice little base. See, look at that. And then what you're gonna do, of course, like I said, is download that image and input it into your book with that inserting images option that I described to you guys. Oh, here's a free option. Let me show you how to do this. Okay, let's delete the cloud. This is a strange color. It doesn't really work with black. So let's darken it up a little bit and let's grab this and swivel it around. Come on, work with me. Bring it all the way to the top of the page. And I don't know if I love that. Now it's a little bit too dark. So let's play with it, bring it back down. Oh, here's the problem. It's actually in front. Let's put it backwards. Could make it a color, but of course your book's not gonna be printed in color. So I would suggest avoiding that. Just do grayscale options. And then now for something like this, that's extending all the way to the edges of the page, you're going to use that bleed feature that I mentioned. So I will again, direct you back to my video on inserting images and how to do the bleed feature, but this can look really professional. Not necessarily this picture, but a picture like this <laughs> that extends out to the edges of the page and is really interesting. The last thing I wanna 
show you is if you decide to work with an artist who actually, you know, creates uh, what's it called custom artwork for you and for your book. Now, I hesitated to mention this because if you are doing the formatting yourself, most likely you're trying to save money. And if you hire an artist to do artwork for every single chapter, that's not necessarily going to save you a lot of money. That's going to make it back to being kind of expensive. But maybe you hire an artist to do just one artwork that you're going to put on every chapter or you could actually pay for some of these designs in Canva for a one-time use as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I have some really, really cool character art that you guys have seen. I'm gonna pretend, even though this is not a good fit size-wise, because this is a very tall character, I'm gonna pretend that I wanna add in Ari as one of my chapter header images here. So this is by Ingrid Nordley, shout out to Ingrid. And actually this is not a PNG. Let me delete that. So this is the original color, okay? We're gonna have to go to filter and turn it to grayscale. Then I'm gonna make it smaller. And <laughs> this font is just not fantasy font at all, but I'm gonna bring it to the front as always. And I'm gonna kind of try to make it look like Ari is sitting on it, if that makes sense. Uh, it's not working the best, but I could also do this and crop the image so that now it's exactly sitting across it. And let's make it a little smaller so there's no cutoff there. If I zoom in, that would make this job a lot easier. Now I can really see. Okay, let's bump her over to right there. I mean, now there's this strange little cutoff there. In my opinion, that's a bit weird. We're not really making a real one here. I'm just showing you what it would look like to include actual specific custom artwork design in your chapter header. Now, I really think that looks strange. So let me see if I can at least find a better style. Let's go over to handwriting, which I don't know. I like handwriting. Nope. I mean, that's okay. Uh, see, I don't know. I don't like this. Anyway, <laughs> you can see how I'm just playing around with it. I could draw it all the way down to the bottom, but of course, if this is your chapter header, then there's going to be words underneath that. It's going to look really, really strange. Um, another thing that I could do is I could keep her behind it like that, but I could input one of these lines here. And so that makes it a more intentional looking cutoff. It's not amazing, but you get the idea. Let me zoom out and compare them too. So this is just three examples where I put together really, really quick chapter headers and showed you all the different ways you can play around. There's actually tons more ways you can play around. All right, as promised, I wanna show you how to do ebook formatting since the other stuff that I just went over was fully related to paperbacks. And so remember how I said that ebooks are going to have a whole different system and you don't wanna get rid of the chapter titles because it's gonna be grabbed by the ebook vendor, like here on Draft to Digital. They're going to grab each of the chapter names and include it in a table of contents for the reader. And so ebooks are supposed to have table of contents for readers. So it's really important that you don't lose that. I'm going to show you how draft to digital lets you make the chapter headers really gorgeous without actually downloading any specific image. But really quick before I do, I also want to point out on the side here, you can see how draft to digital helps you add some of the front and back matter, which they call end matter. So title page, copyrights, dedication also by and about the author and so on. So if you ever don't want to do these front and back matter pages within Word, you can do them directly in draft to digital. And here are the fancy formatting things that I just mentioned. So let me start on a chapter page. So right here is chapter one. Right now I have it on the style called fantasy, which is perfect for my fantasy book. But I have also used the dragon when it was the cursed hunter with the dragon theme. And there's a bunch of other specific to fantasy, as you can see here. But then there's also a romance category, which is really cute. There's a mystery and thriller category. I happen to think this looks extremely classy. There is an all purpose that is just really basic or watercolor cute little corner decorations. That's also gorgeous, I think. And then there's very minimal. And there's even nonfiction options, which you'll notice that unlike fiction, which was always, always, always single space like this, 
Nonfiction actually will double space between paragraphs and textbook does the same thing. So I'm gonna pop this back to my fantasy, which is the one that I went with. You can enable drop caps. So you don't wanna pull over drop caps from a physical book because it's much easier to let a draft to digital enable it for you. And if I skip to chapter two, you can see that the same changes are going to stay in place no matter what chapter we're on. I also wanna show you the scene breaks because this cute little scene break here is the fantasy one, but the different style options here on the side also have different scene break options. And I know I've talked about draft to digital before, so if you wanna know more, I will link my video all about it in this series playlist, but I just wanna point out that this is the page where you can download the file for Kindle or for Nook or Kobo, or just even a PDF just for yourself without ever publishing the book online. And you can get this really gorgeous ebook formatting directly to your computer to put on other vendors without ever actually publishing on draft to digital if you wanted to. Hopefully that gives you a starting point. I would encourage you to definitely enjoy this process and be creative because chapter headers are actually one of the few things that are meant to draw the reader's eye and be a little bit more creative. So again, I would point you to that video on how to insert images if you have any questions about that. And that's linked in the formatting playlist below. But now in the very last video in this series, I wanna bring everything together into one video and walk you through all the steps, putting them all together.